talk a little bit more about the quarter from Ottawa. Bruce, nice to see you. Um, you know, just to pick up on what we were just talking about with Afria, uh, you guys have been a highly acquisitive company. That company now looking to make some changes on the corporate governance side because there's a lot of uh, activity, very quick uh, changes, and, and they want to make sure that everything they do is correct and that the right governance is in place. Um, have you guys had your own conversations around those kind of issues as well? Yeah, I, you know, I can't comment on where they are, but like simple things in our spot from day one. Uh, if you're working for me or anybody reporting to me or reporting to those people, you can't buy stocks in companies in the sector. Can't. And the reason is, what if we want to buy that company? It looks like we're self-dealing. And what if we actually want to run them over? Maybe you're biased about running them over. And so we just kept it clean from day one. And I think um, when you're doing transactions in our space, um, there's a lot more things that sound good than are actually good. So due diligence is an internal full-time gig. We have uh, probably four people who do nothing but look at things all the time. And if you're out in the network long enough, you actually know every player and what's going on. And so there's nothing for us to buy in Canada. There are things that we picked up in Colorado like Abu or Germany like Storz and Bickel. Um, but, you know, you can't clean up. You just have to stay on the right track from day one. And so that's interesting. So is it any employee or only those at the management and board level that are not allowed to have holdings in any other marijuana company? And how long has that policy yeah, been in just place? Pushed, uh, I think I've said no to a thousand deals since I stopped started this thing. And uh, all the people like Tim and Mark who report to me and the folks who tie into them, it's just, it's understood, guys. This is not, you, you can't appear or in fact be self-dealing. And that's been since day one. And guess what? Um, the number of deals that come through every week that say, you know, we'd almost give you the stock so we could put your name on it are quite significant. So probably it's a fiscally stupid move on my part for everyone, but it's allowed us to stay focused and clean. So you are um, clearly indicating there are more acquisitions on the way. That was one of the takeaways from what you talked about with analysts, and you've been very clear in interviews on this network, you just alluded to it again, that you're not really looking to do transformational deals here in Canada. Bruce, give us some, a sense yeah. on what you're going to be doing uh, over the course of 2019, how much you want to spend on right. deals, and where you're looking to do them. Yeah. So in Canada, we have about 6 million square feet of greenhouse and or indoor production. So lots of stuff to grow. We have uh, a platform for extracting the ingredients out and we've built our own platforms for making everything from chocolate to bottled beverages. So I don't need a partner. And what a partner means in business usually is somebody who takes half the margin and necessarily doesn't do half the work. So we're not looking for that. But when you go globally, there's a big pharmaceutical opportunity. So we're always looking at is there a pharmaceutical element to a company that could spin out or is there a company that was wrong in their uh, sort of molecule strategy and need to start uh, aiming at our stuff? Um, there's a whole bunch of greenhouse platforms in different countries to buy and build, but um, really what we're now doing is international. So we're, you know, our next big wave is hemp in the U.S. And that means building out things that start looking like what was the Hershey factory in Smith Falls, there's a whole bunch of infrastructure in different U.S. states that becomes filled with us. And so you're going to see us ever more global. And probably in about a year when I talk to you, you'll say, you know, this great company that is a globally driven revenue source uh, happens to be headquartered in Canada because that's kind of how it's evolving. But you, you make an interesting point because you're in so many different types of business lines, whether it's hemp, I mean, you're working on exper uh, experiments for uh, animal-based applications of uh, CBD, yep. you've got recreational, you've got medical. I mean, are you doing this in the meantime till we get recreational legalization in the United States and then the company kind of focuses up on, on that market? Or is there a true benefit to being spread kind of everywhere that marijuana can go, that seems to be where you're going. Does that, you know, perhaps cause the risk or, or lead to the risk of being spread too thin and not being focused enough? Yeah, so we have kind of four structured steps in our business. The first is what everybody talks about, but it's actually going to become the least exciting, which is how do you produce the ingredients, meaning how do you grow cannabis or how do you synthetically convert it? But those are ingredients, and there are hundreds or more than 100 ingredients in a cannabis plant. Then there's a process of getting those ingredients out so you can keep them separate and do the next thing, which is how do we mix them back together to create medical outcomes or health and wellness or veterinarian products? That's all the science. And then you take all that learning and you say, how do I make really great beverages? We well, use the science from that and then the marketing and branding. So it's more like a vertical staff. 
stack that over time has a whole bunch of intellectual property and the markets we go to are the ones which federally permit those activities. So in Germany, there's no party, but there's a lot of patients. In Canada, there's becoming a pretty good party with a lot of patients. And, well, you could say, well, do less, but the end game then is to be not significant. And right now we've structured ourselves where in every country we have great leaders and in every line of product we have focused people. And so it's a matrix management which enables me to do virtually nothing because there are competent people doing everything. And that combination works very well. Let's talk a little bit more about how you're financing your future. Uh, you've talked to us many times about, you know, a bunch of years ago, you used the fact that you were a publicly traded company and your stock to grow the business. It was difficult to get your hands on capital from big institutions here in Canada. Now you've, you've got a, m- a lot more say on, on what you ultimately do. As you uh, do deals or, uh, or do anything to grow the business, um, are you looking to the, the equity market? Are you looking to um, to the bond market? Uh, are you going to take out any any loans? I mean, just give us a sense on your financial plans going forward from that perspective. Well, it's a good question. So we now have a thing called Treasury Department because we have about $5 billion. And so we have that cash distributed over, I think, five of the big banks in Canada and a few in the U.S. So now we have cash, and now we have a very valuable currency in our stock. And so when we go to do things, if we're building something, we have to use cash. When we're buying things, uh, we try to use cash, and often people want shares, so we end up with a blend. Um, But now what starts to happen is very sophisticated financial groups come to you and say, you have three or two and a half billion dollars of real estate and tangible assets. Would you like us to give you money back for that? So we start having interesting discussions in all of the fields, but when shareholders look at us now, we have... Uh, I don't know, it adds up to almost 20 bucks a share cash. And so the effect of that is we have a lot of options and they don't look uh, kind of like they did when I first talked to you guys, which I think I had my hat out usually saying, and anybody listening, if you want to invest, call me. Um, that's evolved slightly. So that means you could potentially go and tap the debt markets for uh, and, and start yeah. issuing bonds. That would, uh, you know... Is that something you're considering first? And would that go towards your initiative of trying to get a stronger institutional base of investors? Yeah, so we did in June a convertible venture that was about 94, 95% placed outside of Canada with big institutions. And so the next thing that would make sense over course of time, if and when we need it, would be for sure a, a, a just a straight bond. But this is kind of interesting, right? Now we're talking about a Canadian started, Canadian headquartered cannabis company that's now looking at bond quality investing. And that makes us a very different company uh, in the sector in that we're an investment and people will invest. And there are other places you might place a bet, but those are bets. And so it's, it's kind of good to be the quality. Uh, they talked about what your credit rating could potentially be. You talk about quality. Would this be <laughs> investment grade? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because Canada, I think we're going to establish as an excellent business and we'll be able to report on that as the year rolls out. Uh, here's what's happening in Canada, and if you normalize the spend, meaning if we have 50 uh, researchers working on stuff for the globe, you don't put all that cost against Canada, you put a proportion. I bet by the end of the year this looks like a terrific business, and people are going to have a choice. Do they want to see us repeat this around the world, because that's what we're going to do, or do they want a dividend? And on that occasion, they may choose to sell my stock and buy a bank, because we're not here to hand out dividends. We're here to create a dominant platform for the next five years. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of some comments Terry Booth, the Aurora CEO, said this week when he, when he said, I lose sleep over uh, the ability to supply the global market. I'm curious what you're losing sleep over. And also the losses, Bruce. A lot of people pointing to um, how much the company is losing as part of this growth plan right now. Um, what should we be thinking about when it comes to what those losses are going to look like in the foreseeable future? Yeah, so three things. We're doing a sleep trial, phase 2B, which means humans using uh, Canopy's products to sleep, the Spectrum brand. So I hope that uh, gets the results we expect by the end of Q4, because then I can actually help the other people in the sector sleep. They'll fail <laughs> to buy our product. Um, but um, well, losses right now are associated with operating in Canada and finishing the construction and implementation and operation of about 6 million square feet, most of which has been completed and is just turning up with pilot growth. So As we finish the next quarter or two, what we're doing are running things that are causing our losses now to produce all the inputs so that when the new regs, which will affect in Q4, come out for beverages and edibles, that whole platform will be running, which means we'll have a lot of product that people can buy 
and I think that will look terrific. Um, where I think the stress should be for all of us in the sector is uh, the regulations for Canada and the world have to keep rolling out because we can't exercise our business until there are rules. And the place just south of us is almost at the spot where I think they're going to have rules that let us enter more than hemp. And so it's the if, when, and how quickly can we jump. And so we spend a lot of time focusing on the U.S. and global opportunities. I think Canada's going to turn out to be a very good business run by very competent people as a, a division of our, our, our uh, enterprise. Bruce, I just want to expand on something you said there. As, as investors look to the path to profitability, so fine, your losses are growing right now and the market doesn't seem to care about that, but they want to see a path to profitability. In this quarter, uh, you saw your costs increase and the prices that you were selling your marijuana uh, for in the recreational market, uh, or, or sorry, overall lower. So are you telling me that those are the dynamics going forward, but it's going to be offset by new initiatives, whether it's in beverages or those third and fourth other initiatives that you're trying to do, or that those dynamics, uh, that higher costs and lower selling price itself are going to change and lead to a path to profitability? Yeah, so our actual Canadian cost, suppose you have a greenhouse, maybe they're 3 million square feet. You don't put it all in play at once. What you do is you keep doing it uh, maybe 300,000 square feet at a time. But what we have is all of the operating costs of having 